Hey, here we go. Um, yesterday I uh, had an amazing response to my um, little review of glutamine and um, I, f I figured I need to do more of this. I've um, been saying that for a long time. I'm not doing it today because I kind of don't want to do oh, product, 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 product and kind of make it seem like that's the point of doing this. Uh, so what I am going to do is um, I, will, I will talk more about that but I'm just going to talk more about... Um, you know, general um, nutritional principles and things that I do. Because uh, I kind of figured that um, if I'm not flexing, people probably want to hear about what I have to say about nutrition, given my background in it. It's been pretty much my whole life since I was, um, you know, probably even younger than 15 that I've been interested in nutrition. A um, little bit of background probably on, on me and what got me into it all those years ago uh, when it really wasn't the, the trendy thing to do was, um, you know, I was a, a heavy kid, um, and, you know, back in those days, weight issues and obesity weren't really, um, you know, quite as prevalent as they are now. And I remember it was like myself and then there was one other girl who was like, you know, really, really kind of heavy. Um, but I was, um, you know, I was a, a stocky kid and, you know, compared to everybody else, that was a bit of a stigma attached with that. And um, at age of about 14, I uh, went through uh, anorexia. I was in hospital for four months. Um, but you know, during my really started to, um, you know, to look into food and, and what different foods were because up until that point, we just ate, you know, food was there, you ate, you ate whatever. Um, and then I, and back in those days too, there were no nutritional panels on food products. Like my goodness, to try to get information on what you were eating was, it was really hard. You had to buy special books and they had like a, um, I think fat busters or someone had like a calorie counter. So you could like count calories but there was no focus on whether it was protein, whether it was carbs, whether it was fat. Um, people kind of had this general idea that, you know, fat was bad, period. Um, I mean, not that there were good fats and bad fats and all that kind of stuff. So this is going back into um, where we were being, like mid-90s. And, um, you know, already I, I kind of had that, um, that desire to know more about what I was eating and the impact that it would have. Because obviously I had gone from a point of, well, if I just stop eating everything, cool I'm gonna lose weight um, but then realizing that that not it wasn't even more the impact on me it was just that I got stopped from doing stuff <laughs> like um, you know okay you lose weight we're gonna make you go to hospital um, and take away your freedom we're gonna make you sit on that bed and not get off that bed because you're burning too many calories so I kind of realized that that obviously wasn't the way to do things so then I had to um, to think about what it was that I was actually eating and stuff and then um, quite shortly after that, a friend of mine who was also going through a similar thing, she was a lot worse than what I was. She was like repeatedly in and out of hospital, really, really struggling to, um, you know, to, to get herself right. And um, someone su suggested that she take up weights. And I remember she did. I'm like, okay, this is weights at that point. Like I even remember um, when I was going through that period of wanting to kind of lose weight that we had done a weight segment in our um in PE class and I remember like I'm not doing that I don't want to do that because I can't get rid of muscle like at that point my mindset was even like I don't want to have not muscle not fat I just want to be like skinny and um, I remember saying like you know muscle's too hard to get rid of so I'm not even going to do a weight because I don't want to build up so imagine that you know all these years later like that was like well I can't believe my mind was even thinking that anyhow um, my friend, uh, she would come in, we had English class together at that stage and, um, she'd flex her little arm and I'm like, whoa, that's really cool. Like she'd flex and she had like a little, like a little marble, like she was so thin that you literally could see like the bone, the bone, and then this little marble kind of popped up and then that marble, um, kind of became the size of like, you know, a, 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 a what do you call those little bouncing balls? And then it became the size of an egg. And it was, for me, it was just fascinating to watch that muscle grow. So she said, hey, why don't you come to the gym with me? And um, that was kind of, um, that was that was where we started. You know, we went to the gym. Sorry, my connection just keeps on fading in and out here. So I'm not quite sure if everyone's catching all of this. But anyhow, that was, that was where it started. We went to the gym. We started a little three-day-a-week circuit program where we did all, every body part. Uh, I think we started off, we'd do it once through, then we'd build up to twice, and then you know the goal was to get it for three times through our little circuit it used to take us about 45 minutes um up at a little gym in um, kangaroo flat central victoria called impact it's no longer there now i think it's like a 
a health centre. Um, but yeah, that, that was where it all started. Um, we really did, kind of did it, um, and I guess as a control thing, you know, to be able to control how our bodies looked um, and also to get permission to be able to eat. And I think that was a really important thing that the, um, the, the whole mental aspect, I guess, of anorexia is being out of control and you're trying to control everything. You kind of control, you know, how you look um, and control things in your environment via not eating, um, which obviously doesn't really work. Um, so, yeah, the weight training side of things meant we were burning calories and we were like, actually controlling the shape of our body, um, not just kind of leaving it to chance by not eating. And then with that came the permission to be able to eat more food. Um, obviously, I'm, the, the story of how I got into bodybuilding is, is kind of fairly well known, where, um, you know, there was, uh, we, you know, we were at this time 16 years old and there was a couple of, there was one guy, um, Gavin, who I often catch up with when I'm back in Bendigo. He was a um, teenage show or junior to a teenage show and um, my friend had a little bit of a crush on him so um, we went off and watched him uh, at his comp saw the women and we were just like wow like shit that's what I want to do um so that was all way back in I think like 1988 or something like that so that was pretty much when I fell in love with wanting to have uh you know a, a obviously muscular body um you know obviously now you know skipping forward I'm on the other end of my career um, I don't aim to be the biggest. My body just, you know, there's a lot of years of pushing heavy weights um, takes its toll. And, you know, it's not my focus. Like, obviously, when you're competing at that level, your focus has to be 100% uh, on that. And now I have focus on a whole bunch of other things. And, um, you know, my focus is now more about vitality, energy. My platform um, has always been longevity and health in this sport. Like, a lot of the times when I got into bodybuilding, people would say, oh, this. why don't you train like that? Um, and I would always say, no, I want to be doing this, not necessarily competing, but I want to be doing weight training for the rest of my life. This is not a, I'm doing it for this period of time whilst I compete. This is my lifestyle. Um, so I, my platform definitely has always been health first. Um, that's really what allowed me to compete as long as what I did, um, to come out the other side of it with, you know, relatively, or a couple, you know, a few injuries, but nothing that really holds me back. Um, so what I'm going to, I guess where I'm going with this and, and why I had to put some background around it is, um, whilst I will talk about obviously the international protein supplements, um, obviously why I developed and why I should use them. And I really would love if people would ask me questions because I can talk on anything forever and ever. Um, and I will talk on anything forever, but if it's not what you want to hear, then it's really not that useful for everybody. So if people have questions, specific questions, uh, I really like to kind of like hone in on those and direct my answers towards those things. So I'd love to hear what people want to know because I can talk on that. But anyhow, um, the future for me is vitality. It's about energy. It's about being over 40, hey, over 50 soon, um, 60, 70, whatever, and um, still being able to do the things that you want to do. Um, to me, age is definitely a mindset. Um, you think young, you are young. I know me personally, I still think I'm like 10 years younger than what I am because I because I don't allow myself to limit what I can do because of age, that will never be an excuse. But um, to be able to do that, you've got to, you've got to um, eat right, you've got to look after yourself, you've got to um, keep your body right, mind right, um, you know, keep your mental health right. So vitality is my, my key thing about, um, you know, your best years are never behind you. I never want to be that person that looks back, oh, you know, back when I was in my 20s, when I was in my 30s, when I was doing this, when I was doing that. Having that reminiscence, it's great to look back and say, wow, I've, you know, what, a, what, a, what a life I've had. I think everybody should do that, but it should never be where you live and where you dwell um, that, you know, that's where things were great. Things are great. You've got more things ahead, and that's what I really believe. So, um, yeah, just a bit of a – as I said, I'm jumping all over the place here because I haven't done this, and I think um, what I realise is once I get going, i just got, like, too much to say. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, I'm actually enjoying sharing. It's really, I'm, it's really hard to kind of read who's watching on the screen and that, but it's actually really, really cool, um, to see people interacting. And it's something that, um, you know, when I'm on a, when I'm on a booth and I'll be on the booth, um, years ago, uh, it, I loved that. I, I, I didn't like when it was so busy that all they could do was just like flex photo, flex photo, flex photo. Um, but when I had time to actually talk to people, um, absolutely love that. Like I love, um, hearing where people are at in their fitness journey uh, and now probably expanding beyond that in their life journey and just, you know, kind of sharing and um, being able to, you know, share anything that I think that I can contribute. Um, so, yeah, 
is cool. Thank you for listening. Um, I definitely went on a lot longer than what I expected to, but um, hey, don't if people don't want it, they don't have to watch. So um, I'll see you tomorrow.